So let me begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of being a part of the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, a kingdom that has no end, a kingdom that will last forever and ever and ever. I thank you, Lord, that we get to partner with you in spreading the gospel locally, nationally, and globally. I thank you for the, for the way that the gospel was lived out before our community yesterday in our first serve day. And I praise you, Lord, for the, the gospel presentations that were made and the examples that were set for our community. And I pray that next Saturday, Lord, on our second serve day, that you would work powerfully, that you would draw even more of us to be a part of it, and, and that we would, uh, by example, show this community that we value the gospel, we value the opportunity to make a difference in Carville. Lord, we love you. I pray that your hand of favor would rest upon what I'm about to share and our observance of the Lord's Supper today. In Jesus' name, amen. Nothing in your life or my life is more important than honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. When I say nothing, I mean nothing nothing. I want you to hear the words of the Apostle John in John chapter 5 verse 19 through 23. He wrote, therefore Jesus answered and was saying to them, truly, truly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, these things the son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself is doing, and the Father will show him greater works than these so that you will marvel. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, even so the Son also gives life to whom he wishes. For not even the Father judges anyone but he's given all judgment to the Son so that all will honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Now, not too long after Jesus uttered these words, he gathered his disciples in the upper room to prepare them for his coming death and his departure back to heaven. In those sacred moments, he shared the Passover meal with them and he laid out a blueprint for a fresh way to honor him through what we call the Lord's Supper. Out of all the meals that Jesus must have enjoyed in his life of approximately 33 years, I'm sure this particular Passover celebration must have stuck out to Jesus as one of the most special ones he had ever participated in. You've been a part of special meals, haven't you? A wedding reception, a birthday party, a family picnic, or a significant wedding anniversary. My prayer is that about, out of all the special meals that you've ever participated in, my prayer is that the Lord's Supper would rank right up there at the top as the most special meal that you've ever participated in. Now, this meal is not designed to fill your stomach. It is designed to fill your soul and to, 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 to help you in your spiritual life. So with that being said, I want you to take your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Paul recorded these remarkable words of Jesus. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So what are we doing today? We are remembering the death of Jesus, the atoning death of Jesus on our behalf. It's interesting that the Bible never tells us to remember his birth. 
The Bible never tells us to remember his resurrection. But the Bible does tell us in a very special way to remember his atoning death. Now, you may be here today and you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want you to understand there is no way that the God of heaven will ever forgive your sins and give you the gift of eternal life if you reject his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through him. We have one purpose this morning, only one, and here it is, honor the Lord Jesus. That's what we're doing today. That's why we're meeting today. That's why we're observing the Lord's Supper today. That's why we're singing these songs. That's why we're praying these prayers to honor the Lord Jesus. Now, to to accomplish this act of honoring the Lord Jesus, there are basically three things that we must do. Number one, look back and remember. Look back and remember. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24, Paul wrote, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of of me. And then he went on to say, in, in like manner, Jesus took the cup. He said, this, this, this cup represents my blood, my sanctifying, saving blood. So what are we to remember? We are to remember Christ's body. His body was savagely beaten and pierced through for us. 1 Peter 2, 24 says, And he himself bore our sins in his own body so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness, for by his wounds you were healed. But we also remember Christ's blood. We remember his body. And we remember his blood in this Lord's Supper. He shed his precious blood for us. In Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28, the Bible takes us back to that moment in the upper room. And it says, while they were eating, Jesus took some bread. And after a blessing, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, He gave it to them and said, drink from it, all of you. Now, verse 28, pay close attention. For this is my blood of the covenant. What covenant? It's the new covenant in Christ's blood. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. To truly honor the Lord Jesus this morning, we have to look back and remember We have to remember his body that was broken for us. We have to remember his blood that was shed for us so that our sins could be forgiven and separated from us as far as the east is from the west. Then, number two, the second thing we've got to do if we're going to really honor Jesus this morning, we've got to look within and repent. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 to 32, Paul wrote, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in so doing he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself if he does not judge the body rightly." For this reason, many among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. But if we judged ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord so that we will not be condemned along with the world. You see, some of the members of the body of Christ there in Corinth 
were not honoring the Lord as they observed the Lord's Supper. They had ulterior selfish motives as they moved into that moment. They, they had sin in their lives, and they were not clean before God. You see, genuine repentance is crucial, absolutely crucial, if we're going to honor the Lord Jesus this morning. We must repent of our sinful conduct. Honoring the Lord Jesus by observing the Lord's Supper demands that we examine our hearts, we examine our motives, we examine our conduct. And anything that even re remotely resembles sin in our conduct, we must repent of it. What does it mean to repent? It means that we confess it to God. We said, oh God, I've sinned against you by doing X or I've sinned against you by saying this. Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Please forgive me and cleanse me of this sin and give me victory over it. Listen to John's word on the subject. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 to 9, he wrote, this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light. And in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, look at this. I love this. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So this morning, before we observe the Lord's Supper, we need to do a self-examination. We need to ask ourselves, is there any sinful conduct in my life that is dishonoring to the Lord Jesus? And if the Spirit of God points out that sinful conduct, we need to immediately confess it and forsake it. And God is faithful and righteous to forgive us that sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But we must also repent not only of our sinful conduct, but of our sinful complacency. Now here, you want to know something that truly offends Jesus? It's when we say that we're believers and we say that we want to please him and yet we're so complacent about our faith, we don't take our faith seriously. We neglect God. We neglect the word of God. We neglect prayer. We neglect the, the, the commands that Jesus gives us right here in the Word of God. I, I tell you, that sinful complacency is sickening to the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, why would you say that, Pastor? Because he said it. In, in Revelation chapter 3, verses 15 and 16, to the church at Laodicea, Jesus said this, I know your deeds. By the way, Jesus knows what you do. He knows what you say. He knows the motives of your heart. You, look, you can fool everybody around you. Teenagers, you can fool your parents. Parents, you can fool your kids. You can fool your friends. You can fool your, 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 your fellow church members. But I'll tell you one, you can never fool. You can never fool the Lord Jesus. He knows what's in your heart. He knows what you do. He knows if you're complacent or committed. He knows. He said, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. Have you ever, have you ever drank lukewarm coffee? That stuff is nasty. <laughs> it's just pure nasty. Now, some of you like cold coffee. I don't like cold coffee, but I, I could drink cold coffee a lot quicker than I could drink lukewarm coffee. I love hot coffee. So hot, you have to sip it. I remember my grandmother, she loved hot coffee, and, and she would pour it out in a saucer. And then she would take the saucer, and she would slurp her coffee. That was her way of cooling it off so she could get it to that right temperature 
so she could enjoy her coffee. Let me tell you, the Bible says here, so because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Literally, you know what it's saying here? It's saying, Jesus is saying, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. Sinful complacency is sickening to the one who shed his blood for your sins. It's sickening to the one who offered himself as a perfect sacrifice on the cross of Calvary so you could be saved. As believers, we need to be cleansed from all defilement of flesh and and spirit before we observe the Lord's Supper. Remember now, our goal today is clear. What's our goal? Say it with me. Honor the Lord Jesus. Let's say it together. Honor the Lord Jesus. That's why we're here. We're not here as some kind of religious ritual. We're not here to impress anybody. We're we're here for an audience of one, the Lord Jesus himself. And we're here to honor him and to glorify him by observing the Lord's Supper in the way that he wants us to. Now, we will accomplish this goal If we look back and remember, remember what? Remember his body and remember his blood. And we will honor the Lord Jesus if we look within and repent of our sinful conduct and our sinful complacency. But number three, there's a third thing we need to do. We really want to honor the Lord Jesus today. We need to look ahead and rejoice. Look ahead and rejoice. In 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Paul wrote, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death, look at this, until he comes. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Oh, oh church, listen, we are to remember the Lord Jesus And we are to honor him for his saving sacrifice on our behalf. We must look beyond his atoning death, however, and and rejoice in his resurrection. Aren't you glad that we're here today and we're not here in a memorial service to remember the death of Jesus and stop there? Aren't you glad that we can celebrate that after three days Jesus was raised from the dead, having defeated Satan's sin and death on our behalf? My goodness. So we're to rejoice in his resurrection. He died for our sins. He was raised from the dead so that we could have the gift of eternal life and abundant life with him. Our Savior, our Savior wants us to have genuine spiritual life. God forbid that we live out our lives in our own power. We live out our lives with some kind of humdrum approach to the Christian faith. Oh, my friend. Jesus is alive. He is seated on the throne this morning. And I want you to know that regardless of what's going on in the Middle East, in Europe, or other parts of the world, Jesus is in total control of everything that's taking place. Some say, well, the world is falling apart. No, it's not. It's falling into place. Jesus, let me tell you, Jesus in the Word of God says exactly what's going to happen until the day he comes and we enter into the kingdom. Aren't you glad of that? So we're to, secondly, not only rejoice in his resurrection, but we're to rejoice in his return. Can I tell you he's coming back? He's coming back. And he's not coming back to die on a cross for our sins. He's already done that. He'll only do it once. He's coming back to rule and reign forever and ever. Paul wrote to the Thessalonian believers and encouraged them with these words. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, But also in every place your faith toward God has gone forth so that we have no need to say anything. 
For they themselves report about us what kind of a reception we had with you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait, listen, and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. Hallelujah. Our king is alive and he will come again. And he will rescue us from the wrath to come. Oh, church, there's something we can rejoice in as we come to the Lord's Supper. And I do not want you to leave here today with some kind of morbid thought in your mind. I want you to leave here today with a spring in your spiritual step rejoicing in the resurrection of Jesus and rejoicing in his soon return. Now, everything we're doing today has one solitary purpose. Help me say it, okay? Honor the Lord Jesus. That's what we're doing. To truly honor the Lord Jesus, I mean, really, you must confess and forsake sinful conduct and sinful complacency. By the way, I'm going to invite our our worship team to come. I'm going to invite our staff to come. And we're going to have a moment, a moment of worship and reflection where you can get right with God. If you're a believer in here and the Spirit of God has already pointed out something in your life, a, 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 sin, a, a, a sinful conduct a, or, or, or a, a, a sinful complacency in your life, and the Spirit of God says, this must go. Well, it must go. And I want to invite you to come to the altar or, or you can do it right there at your seat. But confess and forsake any sinful conduct and sinful complacency in your life. You can come to the altar. You can talk to one of our staff members. They'll pray for you and help you any way we can. But I want to say something to you in this room. Maybe those who are watching live stream. And you have never repented of your sin. You've never received Jesus by faith as your personal Savior and Lord. You've bought into the lie of the devil that somehow religion can get you where you want to go. That somehow your good works can outweigh your bad works and God will accept you based upon your works. I I tell you that's not true. I tell you, the only way the God of heaven will ever accept you into his presence is if you honor his son by receiving him as your Savior and your Lord. But you must believe that he is the Son of God. You must believe that he died on the cross and paid the penalty for for your sin. And you must believe that he was resurrected from the dead and he is alive this morning. Will you receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord? I would remind you that as we observe the Lord's Supper this morning, this is for believers, people who have trusted Jesus as Savior and Lord, and they have been scripturally baptized. So I want to invite you to receive Jesus. I want to invite you, if you're a believer, to get right with God right now before we observe the Lord's Supper. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, We thank you for the gospel. We thank you that Jesus is your son and that he died on the cross for our sins and was raised from the dead for our justification. We thank you, our Lord, that you love us and you want us to honor you. And Lord, I pray you would help us to do that right now. I pray for that person in this room who's not a believer. They've tried everything they know to do, but there's an emptiness in their lives. There's something missing. There's a hole in their soul. And I pray today, Lord, that through the power of the Spirit of God, you would draw them to Jesus and you would help them to repent of their sin and place their faith in Jesus as Savior, Lord. I pray for believers to not mask over the sinful conduct or sinful complacency in their lives. But I pray that with a broken heart, 
They would confess their sin and forsake it before you this morning and be clean. Oh, God in heaven, do a work in our hearts. In Jesus' name.